Hi everyone and welcome to this video presented by Swap Pop Gaming. This video is aimed at all of you that want to know more about the foundation of web development. Maybe you're like me, love the connectivity between game development and web development, or a hardcore web dev guy. Doesn't matter, you're all welcome here. I thought we should have a talk about HTTP methods. And today, let's talk about the GET method. First of all, what is the GET method? Imagine the internet as a vast library and every web page is a book in this library. The GET method is like your request to a librarian asking to see the book titled The Great Gatsby. Just as you ask a librarian for a book, your application or browser uses the GET method to request information or resources from a server. Whether it's a web page, game assets or any other data acquired by your project, it's simple, straightforward and used every time you enter a URL in your browser or click on a link. When your application or browser uses the GET method to request information or resources from a server, the server responds with the requested data. This response is typically sent back in the form of HTML for web pages, JSON for APIs, or other relevant formats depending on the type of resources requested, for example image files, audio clips, or game assets. Every time you make a GET request, you might want to provide specific details, like asking for books on the particular topic. This is where we use the GET parameters. Imagine this parameter says little notes attached to your request saying, I want books, but I only want books about cooking. In the world of the web, this translates to additional information appended at the end of the URL, making your request more specific. This additional information is structured in what we call key value pairs. In the URL, the first key value pair follows a question mark, and any subsequent pairs are separated by ampersands. Each pair has a key, which is the name of the parameter, and a value, which is the information requested. For example, in this URL, Category and ingredients are keys, while cooking and tomato are their respective values. The server uses these parameters to understand exactly what information you're looking for, much like how you would specify details to a librarian. Let's delve into the pros and cons of using the GET method. The GET method is straightforward to use and understand. For example, when you share a link with someone, you're essentially using the GET method. This simplicity makes GET requests ideal for begin web developers to grasp. You can bookmark URL with GET parameters. This is particularly useful for saving searches for specific states of web pages. For instance, if you search for best Italian recipes on a cooking site, you can bookmark this search for later use. GET URLs are easily indexed by search engines. This means that content fetched via GET can be found and listed by search engines improving your site's visibility and SEO. All right, what about the cons? Well, the length of the URL is limited, typically about 2000 characters, which means there's only so much information you can send with a GET request. This can be problematic for complex queries or large amount of data. Since the data is visible in the URL, it's exposed to anyone who might see the link. This is not ideal for transmitting sensitive information such as passwords or personal details. The GET method is intended only for retrieving data, not for submitting or changing data. This is due to its visibility and limitation in amount of data you can send. While GET has these limitations, it's important to know that the web provides alternatives for situations where GET falls short. This leads us to the POST method. Briefly, think of the POST method as sending a private letter instead of shouting across the room. Unlike GET, POST offers more security for sensitive information, as it doesn't append data to the URL. It has no data length limitations and it's not visible for anyone looking at the browser's history or bookmarks. Remember, while today's focus is on GET, understanding its limitation will help us appreciate when to use POST or other methods for different web tasks. In the next video, we'll dive deeper into the POST method and when to use it as an alternative to GET. Another advantage of the GET method is that it allows efficient caching. This means that browsers and servers can store the content fetched by the GET requests. So when you revisit a web page or request the same data, it can be retrieved faster because it loaded from the cache instead of being fetched from the server again. This improves loading time and reduces server load. While well, caching is an important aspect of GET requests, it's a complex subject that deserves its own discussion. Stay tuned for a future video where we'll dive into caching and how it impacts web performance and user experience. As we wrap up our discussion on the GET method, 
Let's highlight three golden rules every web developer should follow to ensure security and efficiency. Keep sensitive data out of your GET requests. It's crucial to remember that anything sent through the GET request can easily be seen in the URL. This visibility means sensitive information could be exposed in browser history, server logs, or even seen by someone looking over your shoulder. And therefore, never ever use GET for transmitting private information like passwords, personal identifiers, or payment details. Always validate and sanitize inputs. This is your first line of defense against malicious attacks. Validation means checking that the data that you use or enter is what you expect, such as text in a name field or numbers in a phone field. Sanitizing means cleaning the data, ensuring that it contains nothing harmful, like scripts that could lead to cross-site scripting or XSS attacks. Implementing these steps helps keep your web application secure and user-friendly. And lastly, the principle of least privilege. This principle advises that you only request and access the data or resources absolutely necessary for your particular operation. By limiting access and data requests to a minimum, you'd reduce the risk of data breaches and enhance the security of your web applications. By adhering to these principles, you're not only safeguarding your applications and users, but you also contribute to a safer, more secure web ecosystem. Remember, the GET method, while powerful and essential, comes with its sets of rules and best practices. As developers, it's our responsibility to use it wisely and securely. Thank you for joining me. If you found this explanation helpful, give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe. Until next time, keep coding.